Let's consider rearrangement reactions and why they occur. Consider the following molecule where you have a primary carbocation. A hydride shift can occur to create a more stable carbocation. We have learned that tertiary carbocations are going to be more stable than secondary carbocations, which are more stable than their primary carbocations. So what can happen is you can actually share electrons from other areas to create a more stable conformation. So consider the fact that there are two electrons in this carbon to hydrogen bond on the secondary carbon. What can happen is, is that this hydride can actually shift over to create a product that subsequently has a secondary carbocation. And in doing so, this generates a more stable carbocation than our original primary carbocation. Additionally, since we know that tertiary car carbocations are actually more stable than secondary carbocations, this can continue to happen until you generate what is overall a more stable carbocation species. And this actually occurs in certain reactions. Consider the substitution reactions that we've learned about previously where you might have a molecule where you are substituting bromine with OH. Like we've learned about previously. However, if we had a molecule where the substitution reaction was occurring, but instead this was at a secondary position, what you would find is that you wouldn't get a substitution at the current position. In fact, what would happen is you would generate the alcohol on the tertiary carbon species. And this follows the similar pathway of a hydride shift, which generates an intermediate that has a more stable tertiary carbocation. Let's consider the mechanism for this transformation that, that occurs via a hydride rearrangement. The first step in an SN1 reaction is the loss of the leaving group, where the Br is coming off as Br-. This generates our secondary carbocation with our Br-. And notice that there are two different positions with which a rearrangement can, can occur. The first one would be at this primary carbon position, which we know that if, this, if one of these hydrides were to shift over, what would happen is you would generate a primary carbocation. And this is going to be less favorable than having a secondary carbocation. So that pathway is unlikely to proceed. However, we do have this other hydrogen with which we can rearrange to generate a tertiary carbocation, which as we've learned, is going to be a more stable configuration. And now, our H2O molecule can join at that carbocation position, generating this species, which as we know, is going to later come and be removed, one of the protons, to generate our overall product. Now I'm going to provide you an example where I would like you to pause the video and try to work out the problem before resuming to check out the description of the answer. The first step of this rearrangement reaction takes place via an SN1 mechanism, where the first step is that your leaving group is going to leave. And this is going to generate a secondary carbocation. So your iodide has left, and this has generated a secondary carbocation. And just as I described previously in the video, where you can have a hydride shift, you can also have things like a methyl shoot shift, or even an aryl shift, to generate a more stable carbocation and subsequently follow through with the rest of the mechanism. 
So since we have learned that a tertiary carbocation is more stable than a secondary carbocation, what's actually going to happen is that this methyl group is going to shift to generate a brand new tertiary carbocation. In doing so, we have now generated a species where the carbocation is more stable and the electrophile carbocation can be attacked by our nucleophile, which is ethanol. So ethanol can now come and react here, generating this new product, where now all that has to happen is another form of ethanol can come and deprotonate this to generate our final product. And again, the key takeaway is that you should be looking for opportunities during your mechanisms and your reaction predictions to generate more stable intermediate species. Because this secondary carbocation is less stable than the tertiary carbocation, this gives rise to things like the hydride shift, the methyl shift in this instance, and even potentially an aryl shift.